The LA Clippers were already a great basketball team without James Harden. Now that they finally figured it out with Harden on the team, they're a terrifying basketball team. Just a couple of months ago, a lot of people said that James Harden to the Clippers has been a total failure. Because to that point, LA's blockbuster trade for Harden had been just that. At that point, the Clippers would be in the midst of a six-game losing streak that had them in all imaginable headlines for all the wrong reasons. But now, the Clippers find themselves in the race atop the Western Conference. The defining moment in the Clippers' turnaround was their decision to move Russell Westbrook to the bench. Since Russ has been moved, LA has a record of 13-3 compared to their 3-7 record while he was starting. Though the Clippers' success with Westbrook playing a much smaller role could be an indictment of him as a player, I believe it is everything but that. After trading for Harden, the Clippers were presented with a massive problem of simply having far too many players on the court who required touches, and their star players had apparent difficulties with finding each of their roles because of that. Seeing the struggles they were going through, head coach Ty Lu made the choice to insert Terrence Mann into the starting lineup. And this move showed an age-old yet underappreciated aspect of basketball, that being talent not always equating to the best results and instead, fit being what takes a team over the top. As a former MVP, Russ could have easily taken offense to this proposition of him taking a back seat. But I had shows a lot about his character that he was not only willing to make that change, but openly encouraged it. Many other greats like Westbrook have had unceremonial endings to their careers due to being unwilling to accept that they are not the player they once were, but it seems Russ will have a far more graceful exit from the league with his adoption of a team above all mindset. This mindset from a vocal leader like Westbrook has really seemed to wear off on the rest of the team and has been a primary reason for their ascension. One of the main issues that led to LA's initial struggles after the trade was that they seemed like a bunch of individuals on the court opposed to a team. They have been able to change this though by establishing a clear pecking order and roles within the roster. James Harden since being moved to the point guard has taken on the role of being far more of a traditional as he is setting the table with his playmaking first and his scoring second. With Harden's clear athletic decline as he reaches the tail end of his prime, he has accepted that his scoring must come in small spurts. Whenever he is the hot hand and instead defers to Kawhi and PG, understanding that they are simply more effective scorers on a consistent basis at this point in their respective careers. The beard is yet another example of how far being selfless can go for a team. Like Westbrook, being an MVP and one of the best players to ever touch a basketball yet having to adopt an altered role by means of maximizing his team's success. With this adjustment in attitude and lineup, Paul George perfectly fits into this equation as he has always preferred being a secondary option. It's likely one of the reasons he never reached the top of the league status despite always being one of the most talented players. PG is the perfect second option for this offense as he is as well-rounded as they come, being someone who can thrive with and without the ball. George provides LA exactly what they need as he has the ability to lead second units when needed, but can also be a primary factor in the starting five without disrupting the flow of the offense at any time. Now, this is all great, but the Clippers would still not be contenders if they didn't have a true one and who can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the league's best. Thankfully for them, they have Kawhi Leonard, a proven playoff riser who is having maybe the most underrated season of any star player. In their previous nine-game winning streak, Leonard is averaging just over 30 points on ridiculous shooting splits of 62-51-96. Because of his frequent injuries and quiet personality, many easily forget just how good of a player Kawhi truly is, but if I were promised that he would remain healthy, I am hard-pressed to name five players I would rather have than the claw in a seven-game series. When LA had first acquired Harden, it seemed like Kawhi used that as an opportunity to take a smaller role. But since then, he has been dominating and playing at an MVP level, which deserves way more attention than it has gotten. It is easy to look at these star names and give them all the credit, 
but the role players on this team also deserve a ton of flowers for what they have been able to do. Evika Zubek was someone who I had some major questions about regarding whether or not he could be the center for a championship team, but since then he has stepped up majorly as one of the best rim protectors and rebounders in basketball, even holding Nikola Jokic to one of his worst recent games. Alongside Harden, the two guards will most often be either Terrence Mann or Norman Powell who each have played excellently in their own right. Mann is having a down year offensively thus far coming off injury, but plays his role very well as a pest defensively, who is very low maintenance on the other end. Powell is having a truly incredible season, and the numbers with him alongside Harden are truly mind-blowing. With Harden and Powell on the court, LA is outscoring opposing teams by 25.9 points per 100 possessions and ranks in the 99th percentile offensively and in the 98th defensively. With Norman on the court, LA can source four shooters, and that spacing makes the great isolation games of their stars unstoppable. Powell is shooting 45% from deep this season, and having that many offensive threats on the court makes opponents just have to pick their poison and hope for the best when he's on the court. LA also made the subtle yet important move of acquiring Daniel Tice to combat their size problem with a solid backup five who can provide reliable minutes whenever Zubak needs a breather. We expect the Clippers to remain active as we reach the deadline in making small moves to round out the roster, especially with guys like P.J. Tucker and Bones Highland falling out of the rotation. The coaching staff and stars on the team deserve credit. Instead of panicking and giving up, they trusted their talent, looking in the mirror to see how they could better capitalize on it individually. The Clippers will look as scary as any team in the league. There's more rhyme and reason to what they're doing. They go one-on-one -on -one a lot still, but they have the ability to play quick too, because they can space out so much. With an one-passer like Harden, they can hurt any team in more ways now than they could before. The ways that the Clippers can punish a team with their healthy starting lineup is just devastating now. Even with Terrence Mann's cold shooting streak, the Clippers can still make a team fay in just about every single way. Combined with their bench's ability to keep the scoring push going, the onslaught never really ends. Every time we say that we are somewhat optimistic about the Clippers, they kick us in the teeth. They do it every time. But a big thing is where do they sit? Are they top 10 in offense and top 10 in defense? Can they win a game on both sides? The Clippers are in the top 10 in both. Kawhi Leonard missed four games with a hip injury, but he got himself right. He's played more than half the games he's played last season. He played 52 last year. The Clippers were no hesitation in committing to Leonard after they signed him to a three-year, 152.3 million contract extension. There's no doubt that the Clippers went into this decision, especially now that he is healthy. The Clippers' best five-man unit, Kawhi, Paul George, James Harden, Ivica Zubak, and Terrence Mann are plus 17.4 points per 100 possessions. That's nerdy. But basically, that is their most used lineup. That is the lineup that they play the most minutes with. And they blow the doors off people. That means they're playing one big, and they're pretty much switching everything else around on the floor. If we look at it, that five-man unit is better than OKC's most used unit. It's better than Minnesota's most used unit. It's not as good as Boston's top five-man unit. It's not as good as Milwaukee's top five-man unit. But think about the OKC and Minnesota. Those teams are teams that we believe have real legit championship aspirations. And we've never taken the Clippers seriously as a serious championship contender. And the year that we forget about them, the year that we say forget them, is the year that they start putting things together. The way the Clippers are playing right now, we can say that James Harden is the missing piece that they are looking for. Russell Westbrook isn't putting numbers as kind as to other guys because of limited playing time off the bench. But he's such an integral part of that team's morale and team spirit. 
So, there's a fine line that has to be balanced there. And at this point, there is more optimism about the Clippers than should have ever been over the past four years. Let me know your thoughts about the LA Clippers. Are they real legit championship contenders? Or it's still early to get a real sense of how good this team can be? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it and I'll catch you all in the next one.